We're going to be talking about a practical approach to reviewing empirical journal submissions. The, we're talking about how you would approach it on a day-to-day -day basis, not how you would teach somebody uh, in a course to review it, going through it step-by-step -step in a great deal of uh, detail. So when you start to review a manuscript, the first thing you want to do is get oriented to that manuscript. So you need to scan it. Uh, first, that involves generally reading the abstract, scanning through the introduction, uh, stopping for a moment and carefully considering the hypotheses of the purpose statement of the manuscript. Uh, take a look at, at the overall formatting and preparation of the manuscript. Does it have the centered headings and side headings that you expect? Is it double spaced? Does it look like the person has put time and energy into preparing the manuscript? You may often want to scan the number of references to see if it is uh, solidly um, anchored in empirical research with, of a sufficient size. You may want to glance at the numbers as too many, too few, and whatnot. Then you need to make a basic decision about a couple of things. First of all, uh, do you have the expertise to do this particular review? Um, do you know the general area? Are you current with what's being published in the various uh, journals in which this could potentially appear, including the one you're reviewing for? Uh, then you need to consider, do you have any conflict of interest? I mean, do you know the author or authors? Are they a colleague? Is it someone from your university? Is it a former student of yours? Um, you need to consider these factors and of course if you're in a conflict of interest situation you should decline to review it uh, and, and let the uh, action editor know that you won't be able to do it. And then finally you need to consider where does this fit in your life right now? Uh, can you complete this review in the same timely manner that the uh, action editor has requested in the review request letter? When it comes to doing a review, you're really doing it for two different audiences. The first instance, you're doing it for the editor, uh, who wants you to give them a summative evaluation um, and a commentary on the strengths and weaknesses of the manuscript. For this part of your review, you can be fairly blunt and, and direct. You're also going to be writing for the authors, and when you write for the authors, you're going to be focusing on constructive feedback that makes editorial comments uh, about how uh, both the research could be improved. Sometimes you might suggest that they need to run additional subjects, that there are different kinds of analyses, or even on occasion that there are conditions that ought to be run that will help the authors strengthen the argument they want to make. You're also going to be reading the manuscript as a communication vehicle to give them suggestions about how best to make clear and concise uh, assessments or summaries um, of what it is that they did. At times these two may feel inconsistent, uh, but they're really not. Most manuscripts, if, if they are rejected for publication, will be sent to other journals so that the constructive feedback to the authors can play an important role, even if your overall summative conclusion is it ought not be published. You're often given a form on which you can write down your observations about the manuscript. The form may start with a few concrete ratings to anchor you in your thinking. Um, they'll ask you different questions about the manuscript and ask you to rate it on a three-point or a five-point scale. They may also ask you for a recommendation about how you see the manuscript overall. Is it, is it something that could be accepted as is, which is usually not the case on an initial submission? Uh, is it something that should be rejected outright? Uh, does there need to be revision made? And is that revision, in your opinion, a major revision or a minor revision? You'll be given two open-ended uh, places to put in commentary. Commentary for the author, commentary for the editor. These are usually expandable, so you can go on as, in as much length as you want. The information that you put down about the manuscript overall fits one of those review purposes. It'll be provided to the author uh, for them to consider as they